Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another broadcast, Faith Baptist Church. As all, all of you are aware, Faith Baptist Church is loga located in Lagodi, Indiana. Uh, our physical address is 205 East Main Street in Lagodi. And then our mailing address is P.O. Box 374. Lagodi's zip code is 47553. Or you may reach us by telephone, area code 812-295-4024. If you had your Bibles, if you would find Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1 in the New Testament, I'll give you a little bit of time to go there. As many of you are aware, we just finished uh, a study in the book of Daniel. Daniel, a wonderful book. And now we're going to look at Colossians. Uh, there was a, an apostle named Paul. Many of you have heard of Apostle Paul. And he was in prison for his faith in Jesus Christ. And he didn't waste that prison time. I'm afraid if Pastor Jim would have been in prison uh, I'd have been laying around feeling sorry for myself and depressed and uh, maybe whittling, making tools or something, uh, but not Paul. Paul took that as an opportunity and he wrote four books of the Bible, four books of the Bible while he was in prison. Now they were actually letters at that point and they later got incorporated into our Bible. And so the four prison letters are the following. Colossians, Philippians, Ephesians, and Philemon. I'll say that again. Colossians, Philippians, Ephesians, and Philemon. Now, uh, Colossians was written in A.D. 62. A.D. 62. And here's the interesting thing. The truths of this book are still relevant 1,962 years later. Now, I don't know too many writings that you could find from A.D. 62 that would be relevant today. Uh, the, the, you know, the uh, technology for A.D. 62, none of that would have been relevant. Uh, the... Uh, history for AD 62, once again, the building materials, the clothing. There's nothing from AD 62 that would be relevant today except for the written word of God. Isn't the written word of God a wonderful book? It's just a wonderful thing. Now, uh, this letter, once again, this book of Colossians chapter 1, and you'll get familiar with it as we continue to make our study. Uh, but uh, this letter was hand delivered paul wrote it in prison and handed it to a visitor who took it to the church at colossi and this letter uh, covers really most aspects of the christian faith its emphasis uh, number one is on christ being the fullness of the godhead and the godhead is god the father god the son and God the Holy Spirit. Well, we know God the Son is Jesus Christ, and He should always receive preeminence. He should always receive it. And so we're going to see that. Now, uh, Christians need to recognize both the supremacy of Christ, Christ is supreme above all others, and our responsibility to submit to Christ's uh, lordship. And that's going to be covered in this book. Uh, when you study Col Colossians, you're going to see uh, that we're going to, uh, Paul's going to emphasize over and over and over that Jesus Christ is to be put first. He's supreme. He's Lord of all. Uh, and that should be something that we all accept. And then the second thing is that we need to submit to his lordship or his leadership. Once again, this was written in A.D. 62. And if you've been in a church or in the fact you're tuned in listening to me this evening uh, proves the fact you are interested in spiritual things, those are two subjects that you've heard. Uh, for those that attend Faith Baptist Church, they hear Pastor Jim emphasizing Jesus Christ as number one. They hear Pastor Jim emphasizing how we must surrender to his lordship. 
Uh, but Paul uh, first greets this church. Read verse 1 with me. He greets the church by saying, God has work in his heart, his own heart. Look in verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, or Timothy. Now, Paul says he was an apostle, and an apostle in the original language is apostolus, and apostolus means one who is sent out. Uh, if you recall back uh, in the book of Acts, uh, there was a man named Saul, and he was breathing threatenings, the Bible said, against Christians, going around arresting them, beating them, uh, consenting to their deaths. There was nothing that excited him more than to persecute Christians. But that man named Saul uh, seen a bright light, and he was driven to his knees and given physical blindness for a while. And that man was given a new name, Apostle Paul. Uh, they, they called him, uh, you know, he was Saul, Paul. And then uh, also uh, we see that he was given a new heart. He went from threatening and killing and hating Christians to loving, supporting, and encouraging Christians. You see, you can't do that. Only God can do that. And maybe somebody listen to me right now and inside your heart, you just want so badly to be able to surrender to the movement of Jesus and you want to uh, let him work in your life, but you just can't seem to get that open. You've tried and you stumble and you fall. Well, he can do that, right? Jesus can do that. Now, a person, uh, person that's in Christ, uh, they didn't make themselves in Christ. Uh, God has made us in Christ. You know, we, we were once, the Bible says, we were once enemies and aliens to the family. And he invited us in. He, he adopted us into the family. And you know, uh, we all at times, uh, you know, coming up, that was looked down on. If we picked at each other. Oh, you're adopted. You know, I, I told my own physical brother one time that he was adopted. And, and you know, just little things like that. But when you think about it, an adopted child is a special child. Now, we that have had biological children, we got what came, right? <laughs> there was nothing to do about it. Uh, your husband and wife, when they stood in the delivery room and they were handing the baby, that's the baby. Okay, you got it. But when we adopt someone, right, we... we uh, we pick them out. We bring them into the family. They weren't part of the family, but we're saying, hey, I want you in the family. And that makes uh, people very, very special. And uh, it's a special thing. But uh, now look, look in verse 2 with me. And it's as far as we'll get tonight, well, this Colossians study is going to start out slow. It'll pick up some speed. But uh, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, this letter was given to the church and uh, you know, the, the saints or the called ones, uh, they're part of the church. So he was basically saying to the faithful members of uh, the church at Colossae, you know, uh, I, once in a while, you know, I've been a pastor here a long time. Once in a while, I'll go on vacation or I'll be somewhere and I might send an email or text or call someone here. And because, just because we're absent, I'm reminded of their faithfulness. There are certain people here, when you mention their name, I will immediately uh, uh, think of their faithfulness. Faithfulness to the Faith Baptist Church faithfulness to Pastor Jim, faithfulness to each other. Now there's other members here, to be honest with you, uh, you have to look hard to see their faithfulness, but some of them, boy, it shows right away. And, and that's what we're, we're looking here. Now, it, it goes without saying that the source of uh, being part of the family is Jesus Christ. Remember his lordship, 
Hold your marker there and start with James chapter 4. Turn to James the 4th chapter. As you're turning out, get a drink. Uh, apologize and get kind of dry this time of year. This hot summer weather just dehydrates me through and through. James chapter 4. And we're going to look at verse 6. And it says the following. But he gives more grace. Wherefore he says, God resists the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. You know, uh, we need grace, don't we? And we need plenty of it. And God gives the grace, you know. Uh, when we stand before God, we do not want what's coming to us. Uh, it's quite the opposite. We want grace. Maybe you've uh, been pulled over for a speeding violation, you know, and, and instead of uh, arguing you weren't speeding, even though you and the policeman both know you were, uh, instead of arguing, maybe, maybe you can just say, yeah, I, would, I did speed, I apologize for speeding, uh, you know, I'll do better, can you let me by this time? Well, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. It's spoken like a person from experience, isn't it? Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, those moving violations. But uh, the Bible says that we need grace and we need lots of it. Turn back now to Ephesians chapter 2 with me. Ephesians uh, chapter 2. Uh, find Galatians and then find Ephesians 2, 1 through 5. And you hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit that now works in children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, and the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, whereby nature the children are wrapped. But God, who is rich in mercy, underline high like that. God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, he loved us even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. So this whole, whole thing about coming to uh, uh, Jesus Christ is about grace, Right? We're saved uh, by grace through faith, the Bible said. Matter of fact, it tells us that. It says that we're saved by grace through faith. Uh, and, uh, you know, God has given us uh, all things richly to enjoy and to endure. And when he, uh, uh, put, by his grace, makes that offer, he brings you to repentance. Uh, many of you listening to me, can uh, honestly tell me there was a time in your life you really didn't care if you were part of the program of God or not. As a matter of fact, that was the last thing on your mind. You, uh, you, you like being part of the party crowd. You like being part of the fun crowd, and and or you like being part of the stack of money up crowd. You were interested in so many things, but one thing you weren't interested in pleasing Jesus. But now you are. And sometimes you wonder how it flipped over. Now those things that you once loved, you're not too crazy about. And the thing that you weren't crazy about, now you're all in. And that's serving Jesus. He does that by his grace. You know, the only way to experience peace is to fellowship with Jesus, isn't it? Now I want you to remember something. We are all equal at the foot of the cross. Every one of us, we're, we're equal at the foot of the cross. We want to remember that. And uh, so let's look and we'll, we'll close tonight uh, in verse 3. This is as far as we're going to get. Uh, yeah, we, but verse 3 of Colossians. Colossians 1 verse 3 and it says, We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ praying always for you. Uh, Paul wrote 12 books. If he wrote Hebrews, it'd be 13 books, but for sure, 12 books. And uh, there's only 27 
uh, New Testament books. So uh, there would only be 15 other books written by other people. And if he wrote Hebrews, now we're at, uh, and some people think he may have, uh, now you're at 13 books and there's only 14 books that weren't part of Hebrews. So almost half the Bible. But of the 12 books Paul wrote, nine of them mention him praying for the reader. You know, uh, that, that is the uh, height of connection uh, on but two sides. You know, it's so natural for me to pray for my wife, so natural for me to pray for my children, grandchildren. You find me many times praying for them. Uh, and what, what's the connection? I love them. I'm connected and, and I want to, I'm limited in what I can do for them, but boy, I can call for God to, to, to take over where I'm, I'm leaving out, right? And that's what we do as the church of Jesus Christ. That's what we should do. You know, maybe you have a, a brother or sister in Christ in the church. And they have health needs. Now, you need to encourage them. You need to lift them up. But boy, praying for them is just going to help them so much, right? Or, or whatever the need may be. I mean, there's so, so many needs, uh, you know, in this, this life. And, and we all need to, uh, we all need the prayer. We all need assistance. We all need help. Uh, you know, I'm going to, I told you we'd stop at three, but let, let's, let's read one more. Look at verse four. And it says, since we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have for all saints. Uh, you know, it has been said, you know, we talk about the Godhead Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But it's been said as believers, our Trinity is faith, love, and hope. I'll say it again. Faith, love, and hope. You know, uh, their faith is in Jesus, right? They had manifest their faith. And, uh, you know, we're not looking for saving works, uh, but the saved working. I'm going to say it again. Uh, we don't work to be saved, but the fact we're saved, we work for the body of Christ. And they had love to one another. Love of the brethren will advance the church. There's nothing more important than a church to be in love with one another. Uh, you know, we've had rare occasions over the three decades that we've been together where someone come in here and, and they weren't loving and they weren't caring. And it really, really did affect us all. But we've had the opposite. We've had loving, caring people come in and just fall deep in love with, with each other. And boy, it takes off. And there's just not much that can happen to to hold it back. Well, listen, uh, next week we'll start with verse 5. We thank you for, uh, for coming and being part of our, our Wednesday night Bible study. And if you're listening to it on Wednesday night, then you can go uh, get things ready and, and go get you some rest. But it could be, could be that you listen to it on some other day, maybe listen to it on one of the mornings or, or, or some other time. So whatever your, your habit for that time is, uh, but uh, once again, join us next week and we'll get into Colossians 1, 5. Uh, this is Jim Lilly with Faith Baptist Church. Faith Baptist Church loves you. Pastor Jim loves you. And don't make no mistake, Jesus will always love you. So join me in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come to your throne. Lord, thank you for loving us and caring us and and your grace saving us from our sin. We ask that anyone listening tonight that does not know you as Lord and Savior, that before this night is over, that they would ask you to become Lord of their life. Father, whatever is accomplished in word and deed, we'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.